Good morning, Year Ones. Well, it is time for our very last chapter of the Enchanted Wood. We've finally got to the end. So if you remember, they were in the land of birthdays, weren't they, for Beth's birthday? And they had such a lovely time. I wonder what you would have wished for. I think I might have wished for a pony like Joe. I've always wanted to have my own pony. And all the different foods, oh, I don't know where to start. It certainly sounds as if they had an exciting time. So, are you ready? Poppy's ready for the very last chapter. This is chapter 33, Safe Back Home Again and Goodbye. The party went on and on. The game of musical chairs was fun, for instead of somebody taking a chair away each time the music stopped, the chair took itself away, walking off, walking neatly off and stood watching. Silky won that game. She was so quick and light on her feet. A big box of chocolates came flying down through the air to her when she sat down on the very last chair and pushed Moonface away. She was delighted. Let's all have one, she said, and opened the box at once. Whilst they were eating, they saw a most astonishing sight. Said Moonface, almost swallowing his chocolate in astonishment. What's this coming? Can you see all the different things at the bottom? What's coming? Let's see what it was. Everyone looked. It seemed like a lot of little brightly coloured men running very upright. What do you suppose they were? Birthday presents! shouted What's His Name jumping off his seat in delight. Presents! Running to us, ready to be unwrapped. Really, those presents were the greatest fun. They were like little gift-wrapped boxes on tiny legs, dodging away, trying not to be caught. Everyone ran after them, laughing and shouting. One by one, the happy little boxes were caught and then they were unwrapped and opened. My goodness, what special things there were inside. I've got a brooch in the shape of the faraway tree, cried Franny, pinning it on herself. I want one too, said her doll. Well, you must catch a present then, Perronel, said Franny. And how she laughed to see her doll running about after a red birthday present box. Perronel caught one at last and brought it back to Franny. Inside there was a teddy bear shaped brooch, which Perronel was simply delighted with. Joe found a shining silver whistle inside his present. When he blew it, it sounded like, just like all the birds in the enchanted wood. He was very happy with it. Moonface found a special squeaker that sounded just like a cat mewing and made the old saucepan man go hunting for cats all the time. Naughty Moonface. He pressed his squeaker behind the saucepan man and laughed till he cried to hear him calling Puss, Puss, Puss and looking under tables and chairs. Silky's clock wanted a present too, so it ran after one and trod on one to catch it. It held it with its foot and unwrapped it with Silky. What do you suppose was in it? A tiny can of oil. Just the thing to oil your clockwork wheels and springs with, said Silky in delight. The clock was very pleased. It chimed 22 times without stopping, much to the walking doll's astonishment. They played hide and seek and immediately the most exciting bushes and trees sprang up everywhere to hide behind. Really, the birthday land was the most exciting country to be in. Then they played pin the tail on the donkey and a giant toy donkey and a big fluffy tail appeared out of nowhere. Then they thought they would have races and, hey presto, they saw a crowd of small cars drive up all ready to be raced. In got everyone, choosing the car they liked best. There was even a tiny one for Perronel the doll and an extra one for Silky's clock, who joined in the fun and ding-donged merrily all the time. The old saucepan man won the race, though he dropped a few saucepans on the way. 
Moonface handed him a box of toffee that had appeared for the winner. You've won, he said. Run, said the saucepan man. All right, I'll run. And he ran and ran just to show how fast he could run when he wanted to. What a noise he made with his kettles and saucepans clattering all around him. Supper time, supper time, shouted Moonface suddenly and he pointed to a lovely sight. About a hundred toadstools had suddenly grown up and appearing on them were jugs of all kinds of delicious drinks and cakes and fruit. Smaller toadstools grew beside the big ones. They are for seats, cried Silky, sitting down on one and helping herself to some acorn aid. I'm hungry. Come on, everyone. Beth flew down from the air. She did love flying. Franny ran up with her doll, who followed her everywhere, talking in her little high voice. Joe galloped up on his pony. Everyone was very happy. It began to get dark, but nobody minded because big lanterns suddenly shone out everywhere in the trees and bushes. As they sat and ate, there came a loud bang, bang. Perronel cuddled up to Franny, frightened. Silky's clock tried to get on Silky's knee, scared, but she pushed it off. What's that, said Joe, patting his frightened pony. Fireworks, fireworks, shouted the angry pixie in delight. Look! And there in front of them were the fireworks, setting themselves off beautifully. Rockets flew high and sizzled down in coloured stars. Firework wheels whizzed round and round. Firecrackers popped and banged and jumped around. It was splendid to watch. This is the loveliest birthday party I've ever heard of, said Beth happily flapping her big wings as she sat and watched the fireworks. Lovely things to eat, wishes that come true, exciting games, splendid presents, and now fireworks. We have to go home at midnight, said Moonface, pushing away Silky's clock, which was trying to sit on his toadstool with him. How shall we know when it's midnight? asked Franny, thinking that it really was time her doll went to bed. They knew all right, because when midnight came, Silky's clock stood up and chimed loudly, 12 times. Dong, 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 dong. To the ladder, to the ladder, cried Moonface, hurrying everyone there. The birthday land will soon be on the move. The ladder was there. Everyone climbed down it and called goodbye. The elves took cushions and slid off down the slippery slip. Mr Whiskers got his beard caught round one of the legs of Moonface's sofa and nearly took that down with him down the slide. Moonface just stopped it in time and unwound his beard. What about my pony? asked Joe anxiously. Do you suppose he will mind sliding down, Moonface? Well, he can't climb down the tree. And he certainly wouldn't like to go down in the washing basket, said Moonface. So they sat the surprise pony on a cushion and he slid down in the greatest astonishment, wondering what in the world was happening to him. Franny slid down with her sleepy doll on her knee. Beth carefully took off her wings and folded them up. She didn't want to have them spoiled. She wanted to use them every day. She was very proud of them. The pony arrived on the cushion of moss quite safely. Joe mounted him. It was dark in the wood, but the moon was just rising and they would be able to see their way home quite well. Goodbye, called Moonface from the top of the tree. We've had a lovely time. Goodbye, called Silky. Ding dong, said her clock sleepily. Take care of yourselves, shouted what's his name. Moonface pressed his squeaker loudly and then giggled to hear the saucepan man call. Puss, 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 wherever is that cat? Slishy, sloshy, slishy, slishy, sloshy. Good gracious, was that Dame Washalot doing washing already? Joe dodged away on his pony 
and the girls ran from the tree. Mr Whiskers got the water all over him, for he was standing nearby and he was most upset. Come on girls, said Joe laughing, we really must go home, we shall never wake up in the morning. So they went home once more, through the enchanted wood, with the moon shining pale and cold between the trees. Wisha, 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 whispered the leaves. Joe put his pony into the field outside the cottage. Franny undressed Perronelle and put her into her doll's bed. Beth put her wings carefully into a drawer. They all undressed and got sleepily into bed. Good night, they said. What a lovely day it's been. We are lucky to live near the Enchanted Wood. They were, weren't they? Perhaps they will have more adventures one day, but now we must say goodbye to them and leave them fast asleep, dreaming of the land of birthdays and all the lovely things that happen there. The end. Oh my goodness, we've got to the end of the book. So exciting. I hope you enjoyed that book. Now, I'll put some question, questions on the website, but I'm also going to put a book review so that if you wanted to write about your favourite parts of the book, um, which chapters or events that you, were your favourite, then you can print that off and write about that as well. So all that remains for me to say is goodbye, year ones. I hope you do lots of reading still in the summer because that's really important to keep up your reading and I can't wait to see you again in September. It's big year twos. Okay, so from me and Poppy and Luna who's asleep next to me, see you all in September. Bye for now.